How's it going, everybody? This is Deontay Burton, a.k.a. Mr. Short Dollar himself. Welcome to the Dollar Hour. Tonight, we got an awesome show. Tonight, we're going to be asking one question. Why should lenders give you a loan based off something different than in your, your credit score? And uh, the reason why I even want to have this show is because you got a lot of people right now that have been trying to get funding and they're getting turned down and they're like, these folks tripping, I can't get a loan, I can't get a loan. It's always, and it's not a, a new dilemma where people not being able to acquire lend, uh, funding rather and you ask them why and they say it might be my credit score and it don't make sense I've you know I've been doing this and been doing that and I should be able to get a, a loan I don't know what they're looking for and people always talk about access to capital so I want to have an open discussion um, in regards to the subject and we're talking about uh, why should somebody give you why should somebody give you some money why, why should a lender give you some money based on something different than your credit score and we're gonna bring the different I did this poll on my uh, TikTok, Facebook, and YouTube channel, mm -hmm. and so I'm going to bring up some of the answers I got. Didn't get many, um, but I'm going to bring up the, the responses that I did get, and then kind of go over what I think are uh, the common challenges I think people are having, then give my solution, the dollar solution, okay. to how to you know get around you know to uh, uh, conquering this little bad dilemma that a lot of people are having, all right? Okay. Before we get started, I'm going to say what's up to my awesome producer. DJ Lab and what's up to Slick 316? What's going on? It's another Thursday, right? Yeah, another Thursday, another Thursday, <laughs> man. February, Black History Month. That's right. Make sure you guys are reading, reading, learning, reading and learning, reading and learning. Read, read, read. Okay. Man, we got to get y'all to read around here some more. <laughs> Except for what's on yeah. Facebook and Instagram. Yeah, yeah, not your basic penitentiary books. <laughs> Art, of, Art of War and all that other stuff. Right. Everybody come up here and read, read Art of War. <laughs> God damn <laughs> You know, uh, pimp by uh, uh, yeah, uh, 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 <laughs> damn, I forgot his damn name, man. I got his face in Iceberg there. Slim. Iceberg <laughs> Slim, <laughs> Donald Goins. Yeah, yeah. You know, everybody that read there. Uh, you know, what I'm saying, you know, go, go a little deeper, go a little deeper. You know, what I'm saying, sometimes every now and then read the Wall Street Journal. Right. You know, we'll read the Line of Business Chronicle. You know, use that little muscle in between your ears every now and then. <laughs> you know. But you know, with that said, you know, um, just re recapping the previous week, we still are in the pandemic. You know, people, I know they're doing like a mass push to get the, the COVID vaccine shots out to people. Um, so, you know, whatever you decide to do, if you want to get the vaccine or not, I don't wait for the VA to call me so I can get poked. No, uh, Y'all get it for free, right? Yeah, we get it for free. We okay. get it for free, but, you know what I mean? But, but yeah, you get it for free, but you get it uh, 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 delivered on a free basis. So, again, yeah, <laughs> it's free, so you just get it when they call you. <laughs> <laughs> so... That's it, but it, isn't it free? Period. I, I think. Yeah, so. lad, don't scare I, me. Yeah, I, I think might. I, I might. Be, yeah. yeah, I think it's free. Yeah, I think. I, I think it's free. Period. But that's my bad. No, no, no. But 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 even with that said, I'm just you know taking the normal roll out. Me being disabled vet, I always just try to get all my free stuff from them. You need to. They got enough out of my ass. They say everything I'm supposed to get. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then some. You're right. <laughs> um, also remind everybody, we are starting up tax season. You know, I'm an accountant by profession, owner of Majestic Business Services. Pretty much we're one-stop shop small businesses where we do bookkeeping, tax prep, payroll, um, tax season started. Just so everybody knows, the IRS is not receiving re returns until February 12th. But we are receiving tax returns. I am processing them right now. Business is going pretty good. Pretty proud of myself and pretty proud of the Majestic team. So we're going pretty good. You know, a good 2021 tax season so far. Um, I want to just mention, uh, say what's up to, to, to Mike. And uh, man, is, is Moolah name Moolah on the show? Uh, Dewan. Dewan, I'm sorry, <laughs> Mike and Dewan for having me on speaking to Mike this past month. I apologize, Dewan, but um, just want to say thanks to them guys, you know, for having me on. That was this past Monday, man. I had a blast on the show. Uh, unfortunately, I had this big gigantic oak smashed through the back of my house, and uh, you know that's gonna be unfortunate getting that done. But you know, when one thing breaks, we're gonna have a new thing come up. So. That's I got my vision on how I want this whole new deck. <laughs> <laughs> Wrap around. Little, deck, oh, front and back. oh, no, <laughs> have no in ground jacuzzi. Okay. You gonna get so me? It's always a blessing. You gonna right? give me a check? Okay. Make a blessing out of yeah. something, right? Oh, come on, now. absolutely. We're gonna make it happen. But everybody's safe and everything. But that was this That's past. Good. Yeah, absolutely. That was the most important thing. But that was this past week. Um, again, this is uh, the Dollar Hour, hosted by me, Deontay Burton, Mister Short Dollar himself. You know, um, I want you guys to make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, uh, Mr. Short Dollar, where we talk about personal finance, business, entrepreneurship, and real estate investing. You can also follow us on Facebook, 
and also TikTok under the same name, Mr. Short Dollar, put out you know pretty much all the same information, different or uh, but you know whatever avenue that's best for you. Just go on there and follow us. You can also follow me on Instagram at Deontay underscore seventy seven. Excuse me, but as always, you may not be on the right now. We'll be streaming, but then probably like a couple hours after the show, we'll always go back and uh, and update the description, put all the tags and all the links to all the social media platforms and the business websites in the description section after the the shows are over with. Okay, so again tonight we're gonna have that discussion is about why what should a, a lender be looking at or somebody's gonna give you money or give you any kind of loan rather what should they be looking at besides your credit mm -hmm. okay and you know I've heard that a lot especially what's going on now with the people applying for the PPP loans and you know just getting the, the not a PPP PPP you can get denied but the idle loans mm -hmm. trying to get the SBA loans they're getting denied they said it's my credit they said it's my credit like okay you know and like yeah, I don't think it's right, you know, because I I pay taxes, you know, I should get a loan. You know, everybody got different reasons and stuff, but I want to have an open discussion with people because here's the deal, and this is what I'm trying. I I want to I want to address this subject is I look at it from you know me being 20 years in finance. My question is. If the tables were turned, complete stranger, I don't want to hear nothing about what well, I just want to help black people. The tables were turned, your money. What would you need to know from a complete stranger before you give some of your money? Mm. Mm. Everybody's scratching it. Everybody's going to say the same thing. Well, I just want to help your people. Full name yeah, first. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, people, people, they still be on that. Well, I just want to help people and stuff. But we got to be realistic about. How we go about certain things, because that's one of the things I don't think people look at it is not that you're applying for a loan, but you're going to a complete stranger trying to get funded. And what would what? And I always kind of the the thought process. I try to get my clients to understand what would you want? Mm -hmm. What would you want? Don't say you're going to give them a blessing and God told you to do it, and you just felt like you want to help people. Not realistically. Right. What do you want to see? Because at the end of the day, people lie. Mm -hmm. People tell the truth. But they got a shaky situation. They may not be able to pay. People just sometimes just listen. They don't have enough uh, experience to know what's going on, and some unforeseen things happen, and they had no intention of losing your money. They had all intention to pay you back, but they didn't, and because they're not the the proper due diligence research was going to happen, people lose everything. Mm -hmm. So I'm just saying I want to have that discussion with people. And I want people to be, you know, straight up tune in. Please leave your comments. Add to the discussion, what would a person, what do you feel like somebody should be looking at besides your credit score, they're going to give you some money, you know? Ooh. Mm. Laugh, the laugh, laugh scratching his head now. <laughs> and, 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 and I'm going to tell you, I, I remember, I'm just go back. Oh, and, I got a couple. You got a couple? I got a couple. Okay, well, let's well, shoot them out. Work history. Work history. How long you've been on a, a current job that showed it, um, stability. Okay. Uh, living history, how long you've been a current resident or house. Got you. Um, and how long you've lived in the current city or state that you stay in. Got you. I mean, because if you've only been there a couple of years, then you live somewhere else a couple of years prior to that, you might be one of the people who just go from place to place. Got you. So what Lab just stated is if you you know showing that you got uh, a stable history, of where you've been living in, where you've been having it, and also a stable work history, stable income coming in. The question I spin it around is, what if you have all that, but you also got a history of not paying for back? Well, I guess you also have to look at. Well, how would you find out that history if we not look at the credit score though? Well, I'm just saying, like we're looking at the credit score. We, uh -huh. we, the credit score is not going anywhere. But what are you going to look at besides that? You say, okay, we, they got that, okay. but they got to have some kind of weight because they still got to have some kind of proof right that you pay people back okay but we can we can we can we can uh, uh look at it in terms of that doesn't have to be the main weight goes there okay but what, what else would a person be looking at and that's the kind of thing i want to have that discussion with people because the question is posed because i'm trying to uh spur thinking and because when a person get denied a, a loan because their credit score they stop there mm -hmm. and i always say no Spin the table around. What do you need? And when I say that, what would you want to do? That's not to make you just say screw it. It's really to make you 
revamp your pitch. Right. Well, man, here, let me go throw that at him. Like you just said, man, look, I've been in this same place 20 some years. Mm-hmm. I've been making the same amount of money. I've been in the same company doing this. Get Revamp your pitch and don't get in your feelings with that. Okay. And that's one of the things I think people just don't want to do. They just look at, well, right. that's that. No, you got to be able to sit here and just be ready to pivot and adjust. I remember when uh, my first introduction to credit, I had just got back uh, from Germany. I was at Fort Hood. Okay. And, uh, uh, I went to go get my car. I stacked up my money in Germany. You know, pretty much I, you didn't need, I didn't need a car over there because, you know, you're a soldier. In Europe, maybe one cat will have a car, but pretty much you ride the trains mm-hmm. and this and that. Plus, we were young, so I didn't need to get a BMW or anything like that like some of the older guys. All right. But when I got back state, so I got a Fort Hood, Texas. I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to go buy my Cadillac. You know what I'm saying? I was looking at getting them late model uh, DeVille. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> not, not a caddy. Yeah. <laughs> and I only get a cat. I said, no, nah, but I knew what I wanted. Right. I went. I found my boo. 1993 Lincoln Continental Signature Series, limited edition. Mm. Maroon color with white top, wine interior. Half It was a half white top, wine, uh, wine interior. It was maroon on the outside. Custom. Everything. Nice, beautiful, and everything. Okay. Just general girl magnet. That's beautiful. Oh, man, it's everything. <laughs> oh, man, those, those, those big old thick girls in Texas just were flocking to it. <laughs> That's your car. Can I take a picture of your car? <laughs> <laughs> And I'm telling you, man, funny. I got it. I said, okay, cool. I got the car for one car. And I said, well, look, let me go get finance. I ain't know nothing about it. I'm just, you know, mm-hmm. again, I'm, I'm what, 19, 20 years old. Mm-hmm. I go to the uh, the little credit union place right outside Post. That joker said, we can't get it to you because you got like 30 some late payments. And I said, late payments? I ain't even got now. All right. And I thought about something before I left. I was with a family member. I co signed on a car. Oh, you left. Yeah, but I didn't even know what I was doing. They shouldn't have had me down cosign. Right. But anyway, that was my introduction. I'm like, look, I got, I'm in the army. I'm in here for at least another two or three years. Y'all can't just, right. you see what kind of money I'm making. Right. That's all there. And no, no, no. And, 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 and even to my defense, I probably wasn't, I wasn't mature enough to fight it. Right. If that makes sense, you know. Right. Because I probably could have said a couple more things in my defense instead of just kind of screw it, whatever. But that was kind of like my introductory to credit. I'm like, credit? Right. You know, I'm just thinking I just fill out the paperwork to give them the money because I got an arm. Because that's pretty much what most people in the military do. Because right. they you take your little LES, they see how much you're making, and you just get approved. You know, very nothing just, I guess, catastrophic. But you have that guaranteed money coming in. They know how, they actually can see exactly when you right. get out. So they know you got so many years left. But uh, I got nine, man. That was just devastating. From that point, I went on a cafe crusade to learn about, <laughs> about credit. credit and finance and stuff like that. So that was my introduction to credit. And one of the things that I wanted, you know, uh, oh man, I wanted to kind of bring up before we get started. I don't know, I'm getting off. I almost dropped my ashes in my crown. I roll. saw that. I was like, what the <laughs> Don't do that. Alcohol, alcohol abuse. But uh, <laughs> what I want to do uh, first is I want to go over some of the reasons that some of the listeners gave in regards to, you know, what they, what, what they did. Like you just gave yours. Mm-hmm. And, um, Kind of similar to what you said. Um, long banking relationship. They've been in the bank so many years, mm-hmm. and they feel like banks should be obligated to give them money. Especially, you see, they got some money in the account. Right. Um, money being in the bank. Uh, they also saying the ability to generate income or their current, you know, income they have. Those should be substantial reasons for a lender to be able to give them uh, money. But I'm here to say that's not the case. That's not how that goes. Mm-hmm. And that's why, again, I want to have this conversation because so many people look at getting loans and finance because that's you know it's kind of cliche you know everybody like you know want to do everybody wants to you know get perfect credit and tell you how to get this kind of loan give you that kind of loan and half of these damn folks ain't got a damn clue a clue and they ain't got you let they sell you something that they haven't even got yet mm-hmm. i mean the only thing i do is post online you know i'm a million now and that's it you know so <laughs> but when, when you actually have acquired you know, it's a substantial amount. So we just say six figures above on a, any kind of business loan. You understand how damn meticulous and grueling and headachey, I don't know if that's a word, headachey, the, uh, that process is. So, again, that's why I want to have that conversation. Again, this is the Dollar Hour hosted by yours truly, Deontay Burton. I am he, Mr. Short Dollar himself. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, uh, Mr. Short Dollar, where we talk about personal finance, business, entrepreneurship, and real estate investing. 
Okay, so let's get down to the nitty gritty. Where we talk about just you know acquiring loans. Let's uh, let's look at pretty much what the the items that the lenders pretty much look to cons- uh, what they can sell. Okay. Right? Okay. So we just talk about just personal lending. Just you, DJ Lab, going to get a loan. There's okay. Two, two things that normally bankers look at. They're looking at your income and your personal credit. Okay. Pretty much what they're looking at. And typically, if one of those two is off or below a certain standard they have for the particular loan you're trying to get, be it a, a, for a car, be it for some furniture, be it for, you know, a house, if one of those two is off, they're going to deny you. Mm. You know, just pretty 50-50 chance, you know, having that together. But typically for a personal loan, those are the things they're looking at. Okay. Okay? Then we shift over to the business loan. The business loan is a little bit different, right? We start talking about getting a business loan. Business loans typically look at five different things. And what they look at the same for the first two, look at the income, they look at the credit, but here's some what other things come in. They look at the collateral. Mm-hmm. How much, what you got to lose, how much money you got in the bank, do you got a house, do you got a car, do you got some savings, stock, land. They want to be able to something that if things don't go right, they want to come get it. They want to be able to come get it, mm-hmm. right? The fourth, the fourth thing is experience. What do you know about this? Mm-hmm. This thing you're trying to do, you worked in this industry for so many years, you've been a family member, you know, introduced you to it. What kind of experience do you have with, you know, this particular business you're trying to get a loan for? Okay. And the fifth thing is industry. This is very important because you have a lot of industries that are extremely volatile, i.e. restaurants, i.e. clubs, places that people think they're very, you know, lucrative. But they're also very, 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 very dangerous. Mm. And I don't think a lot of times until you actually see uh, the books, you don't realize they don't make the kind of money. They'll make sales, but we start talking about profits. On the other side, that probably don't happen. Mm. And one of my rules I've always tell people is that don't ever get traffic confused with profits. Right. Because a lot of times, it's just like with business, we talk about it. Some people just a little busy, but they ain't making no money. Money, right. You know? <laughs> they giving away everything. Yeah, just like, I was just talking to a friend of mine before I pulled up, and I was talking about the uh, tax business. And I'm not a high tax man, but I'm definitely a cheap tax man. Right. And a lot of times, people go into it, get your taxes for $40, $30, and all that. And I'm like, how in the hell... Can you even just cover the light bill if you're charging that for, for taxes? Yeah. And you might even if you get a, vol- a lot a lot of people coming to you, a person can charge two or three times as more and still be at market and do less work and still be breaking even while you're just being really busy to keep the lights on. And those are the kind of things I think a lot of times people don't want to just look at. Now, why you be so cheap to do that? It may be confidence, maybe market. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But you got to be realistic with that. That's why I was just looking at that with industry. So, again, with the business with the business loans, the lenders are looking at three things with regards to, uh, to a person like you just trying to get the loan. What's going on? Hey, what's going on, cuz? My cousin Robinson, tuning in. Appreciate you checking the show out, cuz. Uh, we start by acquiring those business loans, those five things they look for. Again, that being your income, your credit history, collateral you have, the experience you have in that particular industry, and also what kind of industry it is, okay? Mm-hmm. That's that's super, super important, right? So, and with that said, kind of like with the per, on, the, uh, on the same tip with the personal credit, if two of those are, are those five off, right. you're probably going to get denied. Okay. So if two of those off, you're probably going to get denied for it, okay? Okay. Does it matter which one? No, 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 no. It depends. Does it typically, on the t- typically with a business loan, you 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 gotta have at least seven hundred credit score. Okay. Yeah, with a business loan, typically got to be a, uh, a uh, seven hundred credit. Okay, score. this is where we need to clarify: Does the person who owns the business have the credit score, or does the business itself need to have the credit score? Well, nine times out of ten, depending on what kind of business it is, they're gonna at least gonna have to, somebody has to be a personal guarantor for the business loan. Okay. Now that that business loan is gonna be on the tax ID number of the business, but they're still gonna need a personal guarantor. Okay. That they can go back. Co-sign. And, Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, just you know, just guarantee this is it. Okay. To do it, typically a lot of corporations. What happens is they have a God, I forgot the name of the insurance policy, but just say a company goes belly up, and lab lab is the is the president, CEO that signs for the loans mm-hmm. or the treasurer, whoever does it. They have insurance policies, and I, uh, I apologize, I can't remember the name of the policy, but if it does go belly up, they, the company with the purchase of that particular building. Mm-hmm. They'll actually have that insurance policy, so even though you maybe have some kind of liability, that policy will cover your stake in it, okay. so you don't be stuck 
where you sign for it. Okay. Okay. You know, so that's and, and that's that's pretty common. Okay. In major corporations, you know, like why this person signed for it, and you know, with authorization to do this, that that, that they had that insurance policy to cover you. I, I'm glad you cleared that because a lot of people think they can go get that EIN number, that business ID number, and run it up. <laughs> they, <laughs> get a bunch of loans, bunch of credit, and not realizing that something else is attached to that. You know, you know, it's funny. I was looking at um. Uh, a podcast on YouTube the other night, and uh, with the brother Charleston White, and I forgot the other guy, but they were talking about these were uh, they were being advocates for black folks, but they were talking about uh, how Trump was the best president because he gave black folks all the opportunity to get these loans. How black folks walk around here, we get these loans, but I mean, we're getting loans through fraud, right? So right. it wasn't like you just getting loans, <laughs> hey, you still can get them, saying you still can get money through fraud, right. It wasn't like you were getting it legitimately. <laughs> you been getting money through fraud from folks yeah. and Trump. <laughs> yeah, they just gave you it just gave you opportunity to just do more fraud. That don't right. mean it was just a necessarily a good thing, but like those brothers just like, yeah, Trump allowed brothers to do this. Yeah, but it was fraudulent. Right. You know, you know damn well you didn't have a business to do that. And and you ain't had no employee that you need to <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> payroll uh, payroll uh tech or what they call it, what was that? The PPE payroll protection program. Yeah, you need that. You had one employee, you. Getting, getting those disaster loans, the two or three hundred thousand dollars, right? Just putting stuff in a computer, man. Come on now, and and, and to not be wondering or thinking if you're gonna have some kind of recourse, but you crazy as hell, stand. Nah, uh-uh. They want their money. That's what it is. What my cousin? How can I get it? Because that's all I can need. That's what I'm talking about, cuz. Man, I'm glad you tuned in, man. And and a lot of times people were looking at it in terms of what they was able to acquire. With those loans, but you know, again, I guess if somebody was dangling that carrot in front of you, you got an opportunity to make, uh, get, you know, get ten, twenty, thirty, hundred thousand dollars. You know, we'll take care of the police and the judge and all that stuff later, I guess. Right. You know, you know, I'm the scary people count. People don't realize it, it's always something attached when you got something like that going on. People ain't gonna just let you get away with their money. I mean, it's just, and it technically it's not their money when you talk about banks. It's our money that they use to lend and make money off of. But at the same time. Still, <laughs> absolutely. Well, you know, here's the deal, and that's what I that's what I try to push a lot of information out on. Uh, Mr. Short Dollar is, because like said theoretically, the you know you open a bank account the way banks operate, you know you put your money into a bank, they have your money with your cash deposit being in a checking account, being in a saving account. The bank is gonna make fees off the the actual interest they make off the loans or the fees they may charge in in, uh, in regards to the operation of the bank. The key is people just don't spend enough time to try to learn the processes of banking until they need a loan. Mm-hmm. And um, I hear people sometimes say, hey, they need to teach this in school and teach this in school and stuff, but it goes back to what we had on the show a few months back. <sighs> they taught a lot of this stuff in school. Right. You just didn't damn listen. You didn't pay attention to it. Yeah, and, and that's the thing about it. You know, you know, we... we um, People, uh, I don't know if they have these brain cramps or something like that. You know, a lot of stuff that you learn in school, uh, some of it will be irrelevant to how certain things are. You don't necessarily know how to precipitation cause the snow or rain or whatever and everything, but you may, you know. But as far as basic banking and finance stuff, were you, what we talked about on the show that time, were you really at that point in your life at 16 or 17 open to sit there and listen to it? Right. And most people weren't. The people that actually were interested in learning those particular subjects and things in school, they paid retained attention. it. They, they they paid attention, retained it, and went on to bigger and better things with them. Right. The ones that didn't, they just went on and got a diploma and walked. <laughs> like bankhead bounced across the stage at the Civic Center. <laughs> oh, my God. That's all. <laughs> That's all. And, uh, you, you know, you just have to be kind of, you know, I, I don't think people want to be honest with themselves about that. Cause I hear people say that, yeah, they, this is what they need to be teaching in schools and all that. I just don't think the average per, the average kid, depending if it's something you interested, if you're interested in it, mm-hmm. you'll take a liking to it, and have a retention to learn it. But if you're not interested in it, right, they don't do it. And I you know, and I can tell you right now, banking and finance and stuff, accounting, it is boring. Right. And most folks just don't want to learn it. They want to <laughs> make money. But you start going to all that kind of the the the, the, the theoretical side of it, mm-hmm. not the practical side. You go to theory, and people don't want to know that. Right. You got to spend all this time multiplying, dividing alphabets and and Greek symbols and stuff. That's not 
people that ain't really interested in doing that's that. true that is you know? so true and, and i just when i hear people say that like okay yeah I, you don't want to be honest with yourself right you know um uh, lucky for me we was in the uh we had the magnet program at harford with the uh financial services i picked it up real early and i um i liked it i liked it i like it but i i still didn't embrace it mm-hmm. the way i should have you right. know still being a kid i didn't embrace it either no Man, I don't want nobody. because you focus you know focus <laughs> is girls sports and right. just being a kid and stuff so you don't really have that you know uh, uh, attention span to give it the proper attention that's needed but no 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 i just think a lot of times people don't want to be realistic or honest with themselves about how they thought when they were 17, 18 years old. They just didn't pay attention. But my cousin said we just broke, broke and we thought the diploma was going to make us rich and be honest. That's, it. that's, that, that, that's true, Robert. My cousin just saying, you know, a lot of times people just thought, you know, that, that, that diploma was going to be sufficient enough for you to do it. You don't want to spend that time learning about the credit and all that. Kind of, it's boring. Mm-hmm. It's boring. But, you know, again, the, uh, the uh, reality in the real world gets your mind right. And if you haven't really just been pushing yourself, you see the kids that actually, you know, set the little, you know, ideas and, you know, uh, that were kind of diligent about doing their work and learning stuff, you get rewarded for it. Now, again, is there a correlation with that person going to be successful just because they were smart in school and, you know, and they're going to be successful in life? I wouldn't necessarily say that. Right. I think that'd be, I think they, they do a good job of probably, you know, knowing how to process, you know, you know, I don't say good, be good employees, but really know how to just look up stuff, find stuff, and do certain things the right way. That, that's what they show that. But I think traditionally, man, if you haven't really, if you don't have an interest in something, that's anything. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you're not really going to go forward. I think um, not having money in your pocket <laughs> be, uh, make you interested in a lot of damn different right. ways. Right. Because now everybody want to be a foreign X trader, forex trader. Everybody wants to be in Bitcoin. Everybody wants oh to get into God. trucking and all this other kind of stuff. <laughs> and the problem come up is, yes, you can make money in all those different things, but you have you don't skip the whole educational side where you're just trying to go into doing it. Right. And now you sit there like, no, nah, you can one day make so much money and then lose everything. And I'm all about learning. Right. I'm all about trying, mess up, it don't work, you at least learn. But you gotta be trying to do stuff with trying to learn. I think learn being the goal as opposed to getting rich be the goal. Mm-hmm. Because if you keep going into it being rich, it don't work, and ain't going to quit. As opposed to you going out and learning, now you can learn the concepts, how you fail, how to bounce back, and all that. But that's a whole other conversation we, we can have. But what I want to do is now kind of go over some of the challenges. Because we just went over like the the the, um, the things that actual lenders look at in regards to giving loans, that being the, you know, for the personal side, being looking at your income and your, your credit history, then on the business side, looking at income, credit, experience, collateral, and industry. So now what I want to do is let, just let, have, let me throw out one thing to you. Sure. One thing that's going to, I'm sorry to cut you off. No, you did. Um, we're talking, let's uh, talk about personal credit. You know, right now with the pandemic and all, car dealers are just giving away cars. So a lot of people thinking that they got good credit because they're able to get that car. Mm-hmm. But I guess I, I want you to explain that depending on the industry and what's going on, that they may adjust those requirements based on their need, right? Is, is that correct? What are you talking about as far as the, the, the adjustment that the car dealer has? Yeah. Well, you got to understand, when you go to a car dealership, what the first question they ask you? How much you want to pay what? A month. Mm-hmm. They can actually frame any kind of financing, you know, give you damn near, you know, seven years or whatever to pay it off. How much is the longest? Like six years? Six or seven five, years? Five. five. The standard is five. But I mean, they they do have seven two months, right? Oh yeah, they'll give. You, yeah, they'll give. You. If they give you ten years, they would. Yeah, but you know, you know, you know. But my point with that is just they'll string it out mm-hmm. to make it happen. And, and and to your point, don't get accessibility, you know, confused because hey, I was able to get this. I was able to get this. Right. What, in the grand scheme of things, what you was able to get, in the big picture, why it may be a damn headache of a deal. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times, people because I was able to get it, now nah, it's gonna work. But you actually got a car. That's how, you know, the, the main way people get upside down in cars. Uh, they house, strung out. The, house, the housing market. Remember 2008? The uh-huh. housing market, everybody had new houses. But that, that, that for them two years, they were just paying the interest payment. Then that that balloon payment kicked in. The, 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 the uh, not, what was it? Not interest. I'm not. What, interest what, only. The interest, interest only. only but the what, arms. The, what else kicked in once the interest only stopped? The, uh, um. uh, the main part of the loan. I forget what they call it. I'm sorry. 
it slips my mind. I would I had it a second ago. But anyway. I know exactly what you're talking about. I just can't come up with it myself. But a principal prepayment penalty. The principal kicked in. Yeah, the principal kicked in, plus you had a prepayment clause. Yeah. If you try penalty if you try to do it. But again, to go go back to that was, you know, uh well you had them interest only loans and all those things. Again, I remember going back to working in a warehouse, me and the cat making nine dollars an hour, he told me he got a three hundred thousand dollar house. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm saying. He was able to get it, so he figured and I'm talking about how the hell you get that? <laughs> yeah, no, nah, man, you know. And I know he wasn't even working. No, I'm working overtime. <laughs> right. And I'm like, how the hell can you do that? Back to your point, just having that accessibility to do it, mm-hmm. and they just gave it to you. So they look, they just got off the books. Right. You know to do it, but now you sitting there getting it, and that man, that was a rough time with a lot of folks. Right. That was a rough time for a lot of people. Again, my have got about them damn interest only loans, like you said, just. And that's, that's a great point, Lab. Not getting accessibility to be able to get certain things, mm-hmm. acquire certain items. Don't get that confused and think that's always going to be a good deal. Okay, my credit straight with that. Right, okay? exactly. But what I want to go over now, like I said, again, some of the challenges the average person is having in regards to uh, uh, acquiring loans, then I'm going to follow up with some solutions. Okay. Before going to that, I want to just remind you guys, all right, this is the Dollar Hour hosted by me, Deontay Burton, um, Mr. Short Dollar himself. You guys make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, Mr. Short Dollar. Well, we talk about personal finance, entrepreneurship, and real estate investing, and business as well, uh, where we stream live, and we have uh, platforms on Facebook, TikTok on the same name, Mr. Short Dollar. Also, you can follow me on Instagram at Deontay underscore 77. Mama say hey. Oh, hey, Mom. What's going on? <laughs> I missed your phone call, Mom. I'm sorry. Hard in the right place. Right. But you know the uh, 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 Slick 316 just said, yeah, principal. She is correct. Principal. <laughs> Thanks, Slick. <laughs> But um, when we start going into like the challenges that a person will have in regards to getting the uh, the the loans, this average person, first thing come to mind is poor poor credit scores. What we're talking about tonight, poor, poor credit score is why they can't get uh, uh, access to those the, those loans. Poor credit score. The next one being, and this is I think common with a lot of people, is having cash but not no credit. Okay. The income is there. Okay. And the credit just ain't there. Okay. And, you know, you know, we're talking about the people that's uh, feast of famine. Hey, Cash Claus, how you doing? Feast of famine at the buy here, pay here lot. That's where you go. <laughs> you right. go to the buy here, pay here lot to buy somebody else's worry. Right. You know, and they, but again, I think that's a, that's a very common thing. People with credit has these huge challenges. But their income is sufficient to be able to pay for a regular loan. Right. But because of mishap here and there, and they pass, now they can't really, you know, acquire anything. Right. And that's a lot of people. Okay. The next it's thing. Really, a lot of people now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and the next thing being, you know, your DTI, your debt to income ratio. Well, well, what happens is the actual loans or certain things that you got right now, the actual monthly payments, is too high in relation to the actual money that you got coming in so again you may be making pulling in net three thousand dollars a month but you got twenty eight hundred dollars a month that goes out of different credit cards and loan payments or whatever and they typically want to get you at probably like a third of that or at 30 percent so again that dti number is too high and that's coming with a lot of people because mm-hmm. when they get all the information they put in your credit looking at your monthly payment and that income is just not sufficient enough to be able to cover that okay mm-hmm. The next thing is, you know, even just on the business side, you don't have any business experience. Mm. You, 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 you cook good. Everybody in your family, everybody like your your pies, especially family union Christmas. Everybody like your pies. Everybody like your cakes. But you don't know a damn thing about the restaurant industry. Right. You want to do it just kind of like the sisters. I told you, remember a couple years ago, wanted to get the uh, the bakery. Right. Right. I told her to get the kiosk at the mall. Right. And I'm telling her why. I just want the bakery. You know, because again, these folks look at. It, what is Miss Sweeties and all yeah, that kind yeah. of stuff? Food and, network, see all yeah, that, yeah, yeah, they yeah. see all that and they think it, but they don't know anything about business. And you know, just be like, okay, man, Inventory you know. Overhead. Oh, spoilage, <laughs> any of that stuff, any of that stuff, even even basic uh, uh, sanitation guidelines, mm-hmm. you know. And instead of going working at you know one of these little bakeries or one of these little candy stores for about six months at least to get some kind of experience. They want to do it now, mm-hmm. and it's just because they don't have it, you know, because you can leverage that out. I got it. Mm-hmm. So when you're talking to a lender, but you don't have nothing to the, uh, going into itself cooking at home, that's going to be a problem, mm-hmm. okay? The next thing is just no relationships, and, and, and you, 
everyone knows from if you especially a follower of me, the most important thing that I always say is in business is relationships. Relationships are the most important thing in business. You know, if you don't have any relationships with people you can sit here, you can call on or be able to leverage stuff out. Relationships is everything. Mm-hmm. Everything in business is all about relationships. Being able to lean on people, find out what you know what's going on or whatever. That's the most important thing. And when people don't have business relationships or people they can call on, you have a rough slate, mm-hmm. rough time going. You know, just not even, and that goes past even just uh, trying to get business funded. Right. Because, you know, we talk about it all the time. It ain't what you know, it's who you know. Well, right. shit, go get you some hoes. <laughs> it's simple. Go get some damn hoes. But see, you know, what, you know why people don't want to get no hoes? Because see, when I got to get some hoes, see, now, now you can blame it on Pooch. Right. Because see, at the end of the day, I can always say, well, look, man, these folks want to get on by no loan. They want you to have this, that, and that. And they want me to go to these folks. People want to, the, the less I do, or the less I know, the more I can uh, uh, push it off on other people. Mm-hmm. But once I know, I got to be accountable. Mm-hmm. And people don't want to be accountable. That's why they try to play that. Well, int- I call it intentional ignorance. Okay. Now I can always sit here and say, well, look, I didn't know. I didn't know. But like, this is one of the first things you learn in the military. There's no excuse for ignorance. Mm-hmm. Why the hell you didn't know? Why you didn't go Google? Right, and right now, out. exactly. And what we always talk about, Google and YouTube University, how the hell you don't know nothing? Mm-hmm. You know, the thing that you are totally clueless on, you can just pull it up. Pull it up. And we do it for anything else. Everything. Now, how yeah. we fix that motor? How we fix that, you know, if there's something wrong with that battery, dishwasher, dryer, or whatever, TV, we go right on Google, go right on YouTube and get it. Mm-hmm. But if it's something that we know we may have a problem with trying to get that loan, we don't want to do it because we want to what play dumb. How the hell you didn't look then? Exactly. You know, but nobody wants, it, 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 it's, I guess, some like of fake security where you can kind of feel like I can push that off on somebody else. I can blame somebody else why I didn't get this. It didn't work. You know, the man tripping, whatever. You got to put all that pressure on yourself to make sure that you're in the best position possible. Especially if you're talking about getting some money, getting lending. Stay on top of your stuff. Mm-hmm. Stay on t- I, I understand. We got something called life. We all business. We got kids. We got wives. Or we got jobs and all that kind of stuff that throw y'all track. But you, you're you the one that's going to be in charge of everything or, or, or be liable Fair. if things don't go right. You know, so that's one thing I just think people just need to make sure you do a good job of trying to build some relationships. The next thing is just not enough research in the industry, not mm-hmm. knowing the highs and lows of what's going on, not knowing how what's peak season and stuff. You know, especially we start talking about getting in like a uh, entertainment or uh, uh, retail, mm-hmm. just knowing how things are set up with sales and we you know, especially we're on holidays and stuff. It's a lot to know, especially you don't know a damn thing about it. And if you don't really engulf yourself, you know, like mm-hmm. man. I think I'm gonna sell some T-shirts to do that. If you're not really, really versed with dealing with retail, man, you got a problem. <laughs> right. I think a lot of people get into that, you know, especially like, what's a common thing where people sell gift baskets, t-shirts, t-shirts. Yeah. Uh, gift baskets real, you know, uh, really big now because you know uh, Valentine coming up and everything, mm-hmm. and people just say, man, they 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 don't. They, I feel like if I'm selling baskets, I probably go a month or two out pushing them and locking stuff. You know, just mm-hmm. not knowing how to, you know, how the industry goes promoting it. But because one thing about it, you can you can make a a couple of dollars selling some stuff, but at the end of the day, did you make what you could have made? Did you net what you could have net? You know, did you net? You know, uh, too little. A lot of times, people are really versed about certain things. They don't. They they did okay, or sometimes they didn't take an L. Mm-hmm. They think that's all right, but they could have did a lot better than what they could have did. You know, than what they did do. If they had more knowledge about you know certain things, especially with the with the industry and actually how things go with uh, with that particular business, um, the last challenge I want to say is probably what we talked about earlier: no collateral. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, especially if you talk, you want to buy some kind of substantial loan. I want to get this building. I want to get this vehicle, whatever. And the bankers are looking like, look, man, shit, what you got? <laughs> And people not willing to part ways with certain things, but you want that money. Right. And you got to be able to bring something to the table. Yeah. A lot of times, especially like I said, you start dealing with, you know, a loan over 500000 That's mm-hmm. when That's when they say, I ain't got nothing. That's why I'm here. Man. <laughs> so you can help me get some. Go fund me. going to get what you want. Mm. It ain't going to work. It ain't going to work at all. Right. right. And I think a lot of people just don't want to sit there and just put it on themselves. Like, look. Let me go on and make it happen. Let me, you know, I, I, I get it, I get it, I get it, and I'm gonna make this thing happen. 
people don't necessarily want to do that. And it's just one of them things just holds them up. Again, this is the Dollar Hour hosted by yours truly, Deontay Burton, Mr. Short Dollar himself. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, uh, Mr. Short Dollar, where we talk about personal finance, business, entrepreneurship, and real estate investing. Okay, so we just went over a couple challenges from the personal side and business side, the people that are trying to get loans. Again, we're talking about, besides your credit, what should a per what, 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 what would a lender be looking at besides your credit score? And we just went through certain things that, you know, people... Where uh, we went over first the the, uh, the things the lenders look at, then we look at some of the common challenges people have, and this now I'm gonna give you guys my solutions on how to combat everything. Then we're gonna kind of have some little you know open dialogue with anything. Make sure you guys are leaving your comments, uh, any questions that you may have about anything, you know, you know, so we can have a good discussion about this. Now here, uh, my solution in regards to, you know, you may have some challenges from the credit side or anything and, and how to com be able to combat it just in case if you ch your credit is challenged and you say, look, I know that's a little funny with the credit, but if I bring these little things to the table and this is how to hook it in, okay? Mm -hmm. One of the best things to do, guys, I always say, always get access to capital when you don't need it. When I say get access to capital you don't need it, that means that you don't wait till you actually need the money to go get it. If you're a true business person, you always try to get access to more and more capital. Mm -hmm. I tell my clients all the time, Go get your line of credit. Go get your line of credit. Get your line of credit. You don't know what's going to happen. Opportunity come knock at your door. You want to be prepared when opportunity come. That's right. You don't wait to then. Now you're calling everybody, and everybody's turning you down for this loan and that loan. But if you got a line of credit, you got access to it. If it's a $50,000 line of credit, you driving your truck, tires go out, you got three grand you can spend, boom, you're just paying the loan on three grand. But you got access to it. Mm -hmm. What's the key to be able to get access to capital? It's all about building relationships. Right. Okay, call your banker. Right. Hey, listen, I'm new in business, again, starting everything. I, I want a loan. My credit, I got some issues here. My, my, my finance may be a little funny. But in a year and a half or two years, I want to be able to get a loan. What do I need to do? Can I come sit down? What if you going to talk? Can I talk with you and right. everything? And if they want, and, and nine times out of ten, they're a good banker that'll talk to you. But if they don't talk to you, hey, they're doing you a solid. You don't get, get, take your money and get the hell out of their bank. Mm -hmm. Air, business is all about relationships. Call them people, talk to them, say, look, I want to have a conversation and do it. Trust me. I've been doing this for the past 15 years. Same thing I had my son do. Same thing I have all my clients do. Go get access to capital, build a relationship. Try to have a quarterly appointment with your banker just to say, hey, what's going on? This is me. This is what I got going on. I want this amount of money. What do I need to do? And they'll be able to tell you, if you do A, B, and C over this period of time, we should be able to give you that. Okay. As opposed to you trying to wait and try to, you know, get funding, and you're mad at the world. Mm-hmm. That's that ain't how a business person roll. We got to sit here, man. If you know you got an open wound, don't let the damn thing turn into damn gang green. <laughs> go down to, you know. Don't let it fester. Yeah, go ahead. Hey, don't let it fester. <laughs> Come on, now. Just go get, you know, go, 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 go use your copay. Get a little antibiotic. Right. <laughs> Put a little Band-Aid on it. Yeah. Let it heal up. You know, but that's the key. We want to keep things in relationships. Relationships are gold, man. Going in different networking sessions, being comfortable. Be comfortable being uncomfortable, like I always say. And uh, try to meet folks. Try to talk to different bankers. Give people a call. Let them know. Get you a database of different kind of lenders and find out exactly when. Man, man, what, I never heard of that kind of loan. What kind of loan is that? Uh -huh. And go for yourself and get access to all this capital. So when your opportunity comes or when, you know, you, know, you had a lucky day, you're able to take advantage of it. That's one thing I think a lot of people don't do. And it still stems back to what I say a lot of times people don't want to invest in themselves as business people to make themselves grow. Right. You know, that's what we talk about uh, on the video I had the other week. You know, are you in business? You just hustling. Mm. And it ain't nothing wrong with either one. Right. But you got to be honest with yourself. With yourself and which one you are. <laughs> You're being a person or a hustler. Hustle is trying to make some more money. Be the person trying to grow and be in a certain spot. Right. And you got to be honest with yourself. I'm hustling business. There you go. <laughs> now, uh, the other thing is, uh, when we start talking about now the solution, the first one is uh, building relationships. Focus on getting a relationship set up. The second thing is, study the industries you want that you want to go into. Mm -hmm. And go for yourself learning how to retail, a restaurant, music, construction, accounting. And go for yourself and learn how the industries work. What are they peak times? What are they slow times? What are, you know, they use operational costs? What are their prices, you know? How, uh, what are different spectrums of, of customers they have? They have low end, they have premium, 
Do you have mostly mid? Whatever. And then, then look at it, go a little more in depth, and depending on what type of region you are, are you doing it where you can uh, work remotely, especially where in this day and age we, uh, we in right now? Is it something that you can do remotely? Is it something that you can kind of scale out and be able to do several different kind of uh, demographics, that being race, that being income? You got to do all this kind of homework on the industry. And it seems like so much, but and it is so much, but we're not in business to actually uh, – uh, just say again, we're busy. We won't be able to acquire this funding. Well, we go to this bank and say, "Look, man, look." The bank can say, "Man, it's kind of volatile, whatever." And now you saying like, "No, no, no." I've already done my research. Listen, the city is already gonna back me up because I already got uh, two or three tax abatements. They're gonna pay for. I don't have to pay property taxes for the next year or two mm -hmm. because I'm putting it in this particular zone. I already got a grant from it. You gotta be able to prepare for that because remember, the lender. Is making money off the interest payments. They want to make money off of you, but they got to know you're solid. Mm -hmm. And what, what, but what better way can you show you solid if you know your stuff about your stuff? Right. That's it's that simple. You going out with an application trying to get some money, and just saying, I, you know, I just need some money. They're like, where you get this number from? Mm -hmm. Well, I just feel like I need. Well, where your figures at? Where your projections? Where your numbers? Mm -hmm. What is that? Mm. What the hell are you talking about? I can't give you the damn money. <laughs> You just threw this arbitrary number out, out of the sky. I want $50,000. That's all I need. Hey, by a round of applause, how many people got $100,000 in auto and disaster loan last year and ain't got no money in the bank now? <laughs> Hold on. Shit. Well, <laughs> That damn, that damn uh, Challenger, the Range Rover, <laughs> all that shit gone. It's gone. Is it gone? I don't know it's gone yet. Shit. They might want to pay cash for that. It's gone then. <laughs> it's gone. Why it gone, lad? Because it's sure 800. <laughs> gas 200. Because gas 200. Oh, man, come Mages, on. Yeah, the major repair 500, 600 every time you get front brakes. Cost right? too much to hold it. Right. Cost too much to hold it. Just like it you want a, hey, you want a Mercedes Benz, you done purchase a Mercedes Benz, but you're not a true Mercedes Benz owner, and you got to go get that first oil change or tune up. What the hell? And it's $400. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I got the oil change. I didn't I didn't get another car. No, I just wanted the, 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 the you right. know, just, you know, just a tune up. You know, right. like, where the hell this come from? And, you know, <laughs> man, I don't want to joke about that, but. Yeah, man, I, I really wonder. And again, we talk about solutions. Let me get off that. Get back on task. Uh, solutions to better combat it. We'll start talking about acquiring funding if you have credit challenges. Uh, the third thing I want to go over is just being able to save, acquire capital. I want you guys to be focused on actually having money. Uh, uh, hey, Missy, thanks for tuning in. Uh, having money, having fun set up where, you know, it's not a big thing where they can say, look, if I'm going to give you this money, oh, he already got some money in the bank, so push kind of shove. You know, he'll be safe or whatever. You know, we, we, they can feel comfortable with doing it. Because, again, they're trying to make the money on the payments. They're not going to look at it like you got money. Why should we give it to you? Right. They're looking at you being, you being safe and secure. Mm -hmm. So be able, be in a position uh, where you got that kind of collateral. Again, they're not going to take your money or freeze your money, but they just want to make sure you got it. That you, good. you know, you're going to do right. Hey, just be able to have it. So, again, try to save up and have that kind of capital set to the side, you know. Uh, and then I think last, the, probably the most important of everything, just work on your damn credit. Work on your credit. Plain and simple. I know you got a lot of credit fixers out there, and I got some friends that, you know, do credit fixing and everything. I'm a little old school, and I always look at it. Two things really fix credit, and that's called paying and time. <laughs> paying and time. Paying and time. That's, that's all I know to fix it. You know, right. again, yeah, some things you can do. You can buy trade lines, all this nicky, nick picky stuff do, and everything. Do it. Do it um, do stuff really drop off after seven years? Like, I'm just asking. I mean, that's probably a whole new show. You probably need a whole day. You probably need a whole day. No, 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 no. I answer that for you quick. Um, it can. It's supposed to. It's supposed okay. to. Technically, it can go for ten years. Okay. Well, that's the law. But it can. Things are going there. But it's just really about to be totally honest with you. If that company is interested in still following up and updating it, yeah. you know, depending on they probably don't purge their files. You know, basic. You know, accounting practices. They probably don't purge that from their files. They're not looking to even report that anymore. Well, they so they sell it to somebody who keep updating and updating and updating. Keep saying it's a. Instead of seven years, they keep updated every two years, so it stay on your credit the whole time. Yeah, and it just depends. Really depends with the higher up. They're still doing it or not, because again, they just say if you 
do the inquiry or whatever, and they push it, and the folks don't respond back, you know, it's gone. You know, and it, but it just depends. Supposed to. But it's one of those things that can and can't. At the end of the day, if you owe them, you owe them. Mm-hmm. And then, so, I mean, I know, people, and, you know, myself for sure, you know, when people that owe me, you know, owe me money, and I know they ain't really got it, question be, well, look, man, do you want to just pursue it further, or, you just, or do you want to just hop in line? Right. And that line be so damn long, shit. <laughs> That should be worse than a damn Jordan line. <laughs> shit. I'm joking, be on so much damn people. So you sometimes you gotta cut your losses with that. Yeah, be, keep it moving. <laughs> keep it moving, have a happy life. Again, tonight we're talking about what are the things that first you look at besides your credit when they give you a loan. Here's the thing, people. Again, we're gonna go back to what we talked about initially with everything. I think if we just gave, you know, the things that they look for in regards to the credit, you know, get response from followers, or whatever the basic challenges of the person you have in regards to trying to get along. Then I gave, you know, pretty much some solutions. Now we're going to have like a straight up conversation in regards to certain things. Like what we initially said, you got to look at it from the approach that this person doesn't know you, but they're going to give you money. And let's be honest, would you be so inclined to want to cut an open, you know, take out your checkbook and give your money to a, 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 a stranger that probably doesn't have a, the, base, the best history of paying folks back? Mm-hmm. The thing of it is, as a savvy person trying to borrow money for yourself or your business, you have to focus on how to combat the reasons they're going to turn you down. Mm-hmm. That's where your focus got to be. You know you got credit challenge, you need to be selling the other stuff. You got the money, you got stability. If you know you ain't got stability, you need to be focused on, okay, hey, I got, you know, uh, a good industry. I made relationships. Well, look, I'm going to be able to get support. You got to be able to craft your solution or your rebuttal for that because that's not going to change. That's not going to change. And we got to be honest with ourselves. Well, we, and I, people can say what they're going to say. I just can't see people being so open to just give strangers money. They know they ain't going to necessarily get their money back. Okay, but as a savvy business person, that's where your your thought process got to be. And the other thing of it is, is that I think people are so impatient that even sometimes you might feel like, okay, I need this loan, I need to get this access to it, and you acquired a loan, but you still didn't get enough. You underestimated the actual commitment, and you needed more than what you got. Mm-hmm. And now you're in a situation trying to go back and borrow some more, but that was like. World War Three for you to get that damn long. Mm-hmm. And now you're in a situation you need to do it again. You just sometimes got to be patient. And you say, well, you know what? This ain't my season right now. It ain't my turn to do it. It ain't my time. I'm going to come back to it. That right there is hard for a lot of people. Because just like um, once you feel like you got access to it mm-hmm. or the opportunity to get it, now you claim it. Claim it. It's going to happen to you. Oh, no hell. It happens to you when the damn thing been signed and sent to you. Okay. And that way you don't have to get disappointed. You can be having all the optimism in the world, but at the end of the day, what what it is, what it is. And I think a lot, I think a lot of times people just don't want to come to that conclusion like, nah, I may not be able to do it. But spend time being patient. Think things through. Plan, plan, plan. Read, read, read. Research, research, research. And, you know, keep dreaming. Because you want to be dreaming to see the, the, the to think that you're in the current spot now where you want to be later on. But I think as long as you don't force certain things, you'll be okay. Yeah. That's one of the biggest things I heard a lot of folks, especially with financially. You know, you know, you know your ass can't afford that damn car. <laughs> but they let you, they told you it's a possibility. They let you get it. I must can afford yeah. that bullshit. They let I, you test. I got it. Oh, you test drive it? Oh, man. I see this. Well, I see, you know, you see the sister. We you know when they put that shade on. Yeah, yeah. They looking sexy. Yeah. The guy got his old Toyota uniform. He's sitting <laughs> in the passenger side. Oh, we can make it happen. Finance yeah. will work it out. He yeah, just talk, yeah, yeah. You just driving yeah. and everything. And you know, a damn well. Well, I can't. Well, you in your car, you driving. Well, they did say I can try to get some overtime, and I yeah, really make it, make it away. Yeah, I ain't really got to go out. And now you done bought this damn car. You really can't enjoy because you working the hell out yourself. Right. And they ain't washing it, you ain't shining and all that kind of stuff. And it wasn't worth it. And people do stuff like that all the time. All the time. Guys, you remember, I go back to my single days. Fellas, how many of y'all went over that nice-looking girl house? Look real good from the outside. And you walk in. Hey, damn, where the hell y'all sleep on the floor? <laughs> empty. I'm talking about the house empty. 
the refrigerator empty. Every damn thing well, she empty. Got a nice car ain't nothing but a yeah, nice car. I mean, ain't nothing but an echo box. Hey, 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 hey. What, what, what you do, do? <laughs> Big old empty ass house. Right. Got that house, all the money going there. Right. And you just gonna be the guy, I guess, the furniture or whatever. And it, and you be oh, like, what the Lord. hell? <laughs> They, like, tricked, they, they tricked you into being the furniture man. Welcome to Atlanta. Welcome <laughs> to Atlanta. Fin- <laughs> where you get finessed at the airport. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but again, we 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 talking about we want to be in a position where we can get those acquire those funding, acquire those particular assets, acquire the uh, the particular business loans that we want to get. You know, business and personal loans and stuff. So, again, I want you guys to kind of just stay patient. If you're in a situation where you need further information or further uh. Uh, further knowledge of some of the concepts we talked about, feel free to book an appointment. You know, you can go to my website, Majestic Biz, uh, www.majesticbiz.com, where we have the scheduled appointment, and we can talk more in depth. You know, I, have a lot, I know a lot of people have been looking at the YouTube channels and, uh, you know, they have questions about the loans and how to get set up and stuff, and they, like I say, book the appointment. Mm-hmm. I got over 100 videos giving out free information. We want to go in depth on that. Book, book an appointment. You know, I think if you Google Majestic Biz and Services, we probably got about 60 five-star ratings mm-hmm. we got about 65 star ratings and i you know I, i'm pretty stand-up guy i stand behind my work uh i'm real big on integrity and everything so i want you know uh, I'm, I'm i'm real big on people growing because i'm in the position i am right now because people help me mm-hmm. and uh, uh that's why i want other people to have the same kind of success and same kind of you know uh happiness that i've been able to have but but one of the main reasons because of that i am patient that's it. i am patient a lot of folks are like, yeah, man, I got to have it now, I got to do that. But you ain't ready yet. Mm-hmm. You ain't ready yet. So especially in this particular subject we're talking about right now, make sure you be impatient. Make sure you do your homework. Make sure you stay diligent with everything, too. Now, listen, this was uh, the Dollar Hour, you know, hosted by yours truly, Deontay Bird, Mr. Short Dollar himself. You know, tonight's uh, subject where we talked about what your lenders be looking at besides your credit score. I hope you got a lot of information with that. But, again, if you want to go more in depth, Feel free to book an appointment. Make sure you leave me comments. Make sure you're liking the videos. Go to Mr. Short Dollar. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Like the videos. Leave comments. Good, bad. Whatever's on your heart to leave and stuff. Got a lot of great information now. You ladies need to be looking. I put the, the top grants for female entrepreneurs out there last month. That video's going crazy. Also, I have uh, the top grants for 2020. And then I had the top grants for 2021. The top business grants for February 21 is going to be out this weekend. So be out on the look for that. So I'm just saying everything's going great. And also, if you guys are listening, you're not satisfied with your tax person, you want a financial tax or financial tax expert that's been in business 20 years, book an appointment, you know, with Majestic Business Services. Again, we service all your small businesses need for the bookkeeping, tax prep, payroll, consulting, everything. We do it all from the end to end. Like I said, 20 years in the game, you, only thing you got to do is Google. You can Google me or Google my business. Either way, you won't be disappointed. <laughs> So, uh, but again, I do want to uh, extend a big thank you to everyone for all the love and support you guys are giving us. The business has been going great every year. And also the YouTube channel, Mr. Short Dollar, is going bananas. I've been working hard. been working hard. You know, I ain't even take too much damn credit away from myself. I've been working hard. we got a super team with, uh, with Lab, Slick 316, all my family here at uh, Misfits Media. Hey, man, we've been working hard on it. Everything's right. been growing pretty good, man. But uh, I just want to kind of, you know, just extend that invitation. You guys to check us out. And before I end it up, I want to tell you guys, make sure you check out Misfits Media. Check out Misfits uh, Radio on YouTube, also on Facebook. Also check out Misfits TV mm-hmm. on Roku. You can see all of us, all the different shows that we have at uh, Misfits uh, uh, Media Group. Again, that's Misfits TV on, uh, on Roku. Check out all the shows we got. Subscribe to that. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Subscribe to mine. Again, you know, as always, the description will be up probably in the next 30 minutes to an hour. Uh, just give me a buzz. I get people call me all the time. I seen your show. I seen your video. I mean, just hit me up. That's why I'm there and everything. Right. But again, thanks for all the love and support, guys. Take care of yourself. Be safe. Mask up. Wash your hands. Uh, they saying two masks now. Two masks now. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> they said uh, one mask for two if you got it. Yeah. So you got a COVID and a stink, bro. <laughs> Protect yourself at all times. <laughs> hey, guys, but love you guys. Take care of yourself, and I'll see you guys soon.